Number one. This story happened a year ago. I was living with then my boyfriend, now fiance. Anyways, we lived in a townhouse in the suburbs, pretty safe area. There had been some robberies a couple of blocks away, but they weren't common, and I felt pretty safe walking home alone at night. So one weekend. My boyfriend's brother, Marshall, and his girlfriend, Amy, as well as her brother, Curtis, were visiting. We were all just going to chill, have a couple of drinks, and play video games, and just relax. My boyfriend had his LSATs, and after some months of hard studying, he wanted to just relax before the exam. Unfortunately, I ended up getting very sick. It was the first flu that I've ever had. Extremely high fever, headaches, body aches and all that good stuff. Of course, I didn't want that to stop my friends from having a good time, so they came over anyways, and I just stayed in my room. They went out to eat before they came over, so I was in bed alone watching TV. It felt like I was dying, and I slept on and off. At around 4pm, I heard the door open and figured they were back, but when I called out for my boyfriend, no one answered. Even if he was there, he probably wouldn't have heard me. But I knew he'd come and check on me as soon as he came back. So, I assumed I just heard something fall or the neighbours were making too much noise. So, I just dismissed it and went back to sleep. I remember I was sleeping on my back. And in a deep sleep, I groggily opened my eyes and thought I saw a figure move across my room. I was so heavily medicated and so sick, I didn't even fully understand what had happened and what that meant. Like, I actually saw the figure, but it didn't connect in my brain that I may have seen someone, and since it was dark in the room, I think part of me just thought it was the TV. Finally, at around 7pm, everyone came back. They were loud. Amy, my boyfriend's brother's girlfriend, was very tipsy. And she's a lot of fun when she's drunk, so there was lots of laughter. My boyfriend came in to check on me. He brought me some soup, and he sat next to me and talked to me about his day as I ate. I then asked him to look in the basket under the bed to get the new bottle of aspirin. We had a full-size bed. I had one small basket under the bed where I kept extra pill bottles, toothbrushes, shaving cream, and stuff like that. I didn't know it right away. But thank God he looked under the bed. He put his head up and handed me the aspirin. But his facial expression had changed. Like he lost all the colour from his face. I didn't think much of it and said thank you. Come on, uh, I'm gonna take you to the bathroom. Let's go. He never stutters. I was kind of out of it. But I remember picking up on it. I told him no, I really didn't have to pee, and that I didn't feel like getting up. He said, No, let's go, I really don't want to climb back up the stairs just so you can piss. I remember feeling pretty hurt by his words, but knew he was right since I just had a soup and had a bottle of water. He walked me down the stairs, and I couldn't understand why he didn't just use the bathroom upstairs. I think I was so sick, I just felt too exhaustive to even question. He then sat me down on the couch. What's going on? I practically whispered this as I was told, although in my head it sounded loud. He took out his phone and his hands were shaking. I asked him what was wrong, and I will never forget how my heart sank, and I felt like I couldn't breathe when he whispered, There was someone under the bed. Amy laughed, so I laughed as well, thinking it was a prank, but it felt serious. My boyfriend's brother suggested we get out of the house, so we did. As we were leaving, we heard a thud upstairs. We quickly left and drove away, then called the police. The police came and searched the house, but they didn't find anyone. He must have known we suspected he was there and left. My boyfriend couldn't give any description, only that he saw sneakers, but it was so dark he really couldn't see. The scariest thing that still leaves me on edge is that the police found a knife under the bed. 
It was a small steak knife, but very dull and rusty. There weren't any killings in the area, so my friends assumed he just wanted a place to sleep. I'm not really sure how he got into our place, but I have some theories. I'm really proud of how my boyfriend handled everything. He's a very calm and collected person, but I always assumed he wouldn't be like that in a crisis. I just hope I never see this person again. Ever. Number 2 This happened maybe six years ago. I had been out that night with friends and wound up hanging out really late to talk to a guy I had a crush on. It was 2 a.m. on a weeknight as I pulled into my parking lot. I remember feeling relieved that the lamp for the lot was actually working. Often, it would not be, and it always made me feel uneasy, even though I lived in a relatively safe area. This was the first apartment I had ever rented, where the entrance to the apartments were inside the building, so you needed a key to get in. I got my key to the building's door ready in my hand before I left the car. Not a thing I always did, but at 2 a.m. it seemed like a good idea. The lock on that door was frequently broken. You'd go weeks without needing your key because the door was just unlocked. I don't know if the residents kept breaking it because they were tired of needing the key, or what. It was annoying, but as a single girl in her mid-twenties living alone, I was thankful for the protection when it was available. Anyway, I gathered my purse, door key in hand, and got out of my car. I'm walking to the door, still about a good twenty feet away. I pass the side of the building, and out of the corner of my eye, this guy stands up out of the fucking bushes against the building and starts following me. They were not tall bushes. The dude had to have been crouched in them. Now, I only saw him out of the corner of my eye. In different circumstances, I might have thought I didn't see him correctly or that it was just a shadow or something. But what made my blood run cold was the sound of dead, dried leaves. The unmistakable sound of leaves crunching under feet. If he had been on the grass, or on the concrete path through the grass, he wouldn't have made all that noise. There were no leaves there. They had all blown against the building, and in the landscaping and under the bushes. I instantly freaked the fuck out and picked up my pace. I don't run, and I don't turn around to look at the guy. I don't want to overreact in case it's a neighbor who was walking his dog or something. At 2 a.m., in the bushes, without a dog. I don't know, I can't explain why I felt the need to not act scared. I could hear the leaf crunching giving way to shoes on asphalt behind me, following me, and they got faster. He wasn't running, but he was walking faster than I was. It was like I didn't want to run because I didn't want him to know I had seen or heard him, and he didn't want to run to let me know he was following me. I don't know. It was weird. My hands were starting to shake, and I was terrified the door would actually be locked, because even though I had the key in my hand, if I had to stop and unlock it, he'd catch me. I ran up the steps, ripped the door open, and got inside. Thank fucking God it was unlocked. Oh. It was unlocked. If he was waiting in the bushes and was trying to catch me, why did I think an unlocked door was going to stop him? Not safe yet. The door closed behind me, but was made of glass. I knew he could still see me. I turned right, and as soon as I was out of view, I bolted. The swinging doors to the stairs were propped open like they sometimes were. If he came inside, he wouldn't see the door swinging and immediately know I went upstairs. For all he'd know, I was one of the three apartments before the stairs. I'd never run upstairs so fast in my life, taking them two or three at a time. I remember making a mental note that I was glad I didn't wear heels. I finally reached the top and I stopped because I feel dumb. I feel like I'm overreacting. At this point, I listen a little closer. 
and I hear the front door close. Panic struck through me again. I turned, went through a second set of doors, which he would have heard, and fumbled my keys with shaky hands before finally getting inside. Lock. Deadbolt. Prop a door jam bar under my doorknob so even if my locks failed, he couldn't open the door. I knew that was overkill. He wouldn't even know which apartment was mine. But I didn't care. I couldn't feel safe enough. I thought about staring out my peephole to see if anyone came up the stairs, but I just couldn't do it. It didn't occur to me to call the cops. I still felt I was overreacting, even though he had followed me into my building. Never had anything like that happen again while I lived there. Whenever I think about it, I get all panicky all over again. Do not want to know what he was going to do if he caught up with me. Number 3 I went to a college in a town with a big university where I attended, a second school with about 5,000 students and a technical college. So, there were a lot of young people around all the time. For context, I am a 5 foot 11, slightly overweight female with broad shoulders, so most people don't usually mess with me. But I do get the occasional creeper that says, I'm a tall, cool glass of water, or some random comments along those lines. I lived a few blocks away from campus, so it was not uncommon for me to walk to and from classes. However, one night, I had met with a group for a class project after class, and it went on for later than I thought it would. So, I had to walk home alone at around 10pm in the dark. I was fine on campus, and about a block after leaving campus, I got a gut feeling that something was wrong. I knew there was someone following me, and most of the town was shut down as it's a small town. However, the pizza place was open, but I just passed it. I looked ahead, and there were two girls walking ahead with a pizza, carrying it back to their apartment, or wherever. I decided better to embarrass myself than to be a victim. I yell, Hey friends, wait up. These girls were total strangers, and they turned around expecting to find a friend of theirs. Instead, what they saw was a strange girl flagging them down, and behind her, a guy in a hoodie who stopped walking. They both got the gut feeling that something wasn't right, and decided to play along. Hey girl, we're on our way to Brandon's party, you wanna walk with us? I caught up to them, and pretended I needed to get something out of my bag. So, we stepped to the side, and they were both giving me a freaked out look. At that moment, the hooded man passed us with this look of hatred. His eyes burned into mine, and he continued walking. I ended up going to the party with my new friends. Later that night, we got a campus alert message that a student had been attacked a few blocks off campus, and the description matched the guy that was following me. We contacted the police and the guy was eventually caught. I still talk to those girls occasionally, though we live in different parts of the country now. But I am glad that I never met that man. Number 4 Joined simply to share this story. After lurking a bit, I thought it might be a good fit. One thing you have to know is that I keep a little bit of an odd sleep schedule. I work closings at a retail job, so I'm often getting home around 10.30 or 11 p.m., and after getting a few hours to wind down and relax, I'm often not in bed until after 2 or 3 a.m. Another thing is that, despite being a bit of a wuss, I often listen to Let's Not Meet story narrations on YouTube for background noise, a habit my husband insists is behind this story though I know better. My apartment is a ground floor one, which in my complex means that as soon as you walk in the front door, there's the mailboxes, then a small set of stairs to go down, and another that go up to the second floor. So it isn't unusual to hear noises of animals in the bushes right outside the windows, or little things like that. So as I was working on some free riding with one such video playing in the background, 
I wasn't faced by hearing noises outside. At a quarter to 1 a.m., I suddenly heard a tapping on my kitchen window. For a moment, I thought it was the video, until I remembered I'd listened to this one before, and it had no sound effects. I paused the video and waited. Sure enough, about five minutes later, there was more tapping. Five taps in quick succession, too precise sounding to be an animal outside, or bits from the tree between the kitchen window and the street hitting the building. I waited a moment longer, and this time, it only took about a minute for whoever it was to start tapping again. Again, five taps in quick succession, too precise to be anything but a person. I had always been paranoid about going to a shut window, only to see someone there as I put up the blinds, so I decided the best course of action would be to wake up my husband. I hate to sound like a horror cliché, but I think there's someone outside tapping in the windows, I remember saying. He went outside, looked around, said he didn't see anyone there, and immediately claimed it was my imagination, and the fact he could see on my computer I'd been in mid-spooky video. I knew better, and told him so, but he waved off my concerns and went back to bed. To calm myself down, I put on a guilty pleasure show. All I'll say is that it once aired on Disney Channel, and was meant for the kid-to-tween age bracket, so it was rather campy and childish, despite being set at a high school, and went back to writing. Another ten minutes went by, when the tapping started again. I paused my episode and listened. Almost thirty seconds later, there was more tapping. Remembering one of the spooky story videos I'd listened to, I downloaded an app to my tablet meant to record sleep talking, and set it on the table by the window with the app running. By then, I was really thinking I should head to bed, so I made sure the windows and doors were all locked. My husband had a bad habit of closing them without locking them. Before moving the still recording tablet to the bedroom windowsill and crawling to bed, when I checked the tablet in the morning, sure enough, there were several short sound clips throughout the rest of the night of five precise taps in quick succession. The last one happening at a quarter past three in the morning. More to convince myself it was nothing than anything else, I went outside and took a look. In the dirt by each window, there were marks that indicated someone had been crouching down. Footprints and what looked like knee impressions. I knew it couldn't be my husband, because I had watched him from the window, and he simply walked down the length of the wall, outside, with his flashlight. Number 5 The story happened to me when I was about 7 years old. We lived in a relatively big town in Russia. Towns, unlike villages, are known for their tall multiple apartment buildings, which I wouldn't dare calling skyscrapers, but some of them go up to the 24th floor or something. Ours, for example, had 9 stories, and our apartment was on the 8th floor, just to give you an idea. A detail you also need to know is that each floor had 4 apartments, 2 on each side, separated by the staircase. This separation left room for a little hallway that some people would claim as theirs, and install a door right at the beginning of this new hallway so they can have extra protection for the two apartments on the side. Our apartment had the extra hallway and the door installed was wooden and old. When we first moved in, we were curious to see who our neighbours in the apartment directly to the left were. Turns out it was a family of three, a mother and her two sons in their late 20s. She worked a lot to provide for her sons, who seemed very healthy at first. Tall, lean, talkative. Although I couldn't really grasp the whole idea of an addiction or drugs in general. I remember being repulsed by the idea that we lived right next to heroin junkies. They were harmless since their mother provided enough to get them what they needed. But I do remember stories of them stealing on occasion. Or climbing into their apartment down from the roof whenever they forgot their keys. One day... I overheard a conversation that their mother could not make enough money anymore, so the whole family was looking for a cheaper place to stay. 
Oh, I can still make out this woman's facial features. She always looked so tired and sad, but still tried to smile when she saw me. Although we did not initially agree, our grandma moved into the empty apartment a couple of months later, and I started to like it more, being able to just step out of our apartment and go straight to hers. The wooden hallway door protected us from the stairway and provided a sense of having a huge family in a huge house, even though I was the only child at the time. My parents were busy people. My mum had a business and my dad was an engineer. My grandma has already retired, but she had a good piece of land out in the village that she used for gardening, so she too was very busy to keep her crops alive and well, and therefore spent a lot of time in her garden. Although I was little, I was raised to be a responsible and aware human being. I hate stereotypes, but when it comes to crime in Russia, I must admit, they are true. The idea of having a babysitter was not widely spread until 2000s or maybe later. So, whenever my parents had to leave the house, I would have to take care of myself. Sometimes, I would go and visit grandma, but when she was gone too, well, let's say I did not complain. I would watch cartoons and talk on the phone a lot and eat jam straight out of a jar. This day was one of those days. I turned the TV on and my party started. As always, I turned up the volume and attempted to sing along and dance to the music. I was all by myself and enjoying the hell out of it, until I was startled by a loud bang. A typical sound the door to my grandma's apartment made, because it was a bit old but modified from the outside with some kind of a leather cushion. It provided a little more isolation, but also made it more difficult to open the door or close it. You had to pull really hard and also make sure to slam it shut, otherwise you could not lock it. I felt a little embarrassed for my loud goofy singing, so I turned off the TV and went to see if my grandma was already home from her garden. I knocked on her door. Nothing. Grandma? I asked, loud enough so that she could hear me. Nothing. I grabbed the keys for her door and opened it. Grandma? Are you here? I asked, even though I had a feeling that she was not home. A strange sensation creeped through my body. I was completely sure that I heard her door slam, but nobody was there. I looked around and did not see anything out of the ordinary. So, I tried my best to shrug it off as me being mistaken and went back inside our apartment to continue to sing. A couple of minutes later, I heard it again. Trying not to freak out, I turned off the TV once again and went to see if my grandma was there this time. Maybe she left very quickly because she forgot something and now she has actually returned. I know, I know, but I had to calm myself down somehow. Again, nothing. She was not at home. I went inside again and made sure to turn our lock three extra times. I was waiting for the third time. My heart was pounding and I could hear it beating in our quiet apartment. I was terrified because I knew that somebody is trying to mess with me. I couldn't figure out how they made that noise and who was out there, but I knew they wanted to get inside. I heard the bang again, a little more quiet but still loud. Terrified to even look out the peephole, I looked at our hallway once I managed to catch my breath. Nothing. A couple of seconds after that, I had the courage to slightly open our door and look outside. Just like I saw through the peephole, everything is fine with the hallway. Everything is fine with our door. My grandma's door. Our hallway door. Wait, what? One of the locks on the hallway door was hanging down from the only screw left. The other, smaller one, fell down on the floor. The steel latch was bent. I don't know how I did not pee myself. Seriously. I ran to the door with broken locks and tried to secure it somehow. A couple of seconds later, I realized that nothing can be done. So I ran back inside and locked the door. One left. Even though I was taught to call the police in case of an emergency, I called my friend from the same building first, hoping that her father would be there. He was. Crying and sobbing, I explained my situation the best I could 
and he immediately showed up. His presence seemed to have scared away whoever it was, and I felt relieved. The locks were destroyed, so was our hallway door. Large enough pieces were ripped from it, which made it impossible to repair. That day, we called a door company and installed a heavy iron door. Do you remember me telling you about our former neighbours? Well, apparently the family was doing worse and worse financially. So, those junkies became regular visitors at police stations for theft and other minor crimes. This time, one of them must have remembered where they used to live, so he thought that it would be easy to break in, since the door in the hallway would have eventually gave way. I can't believe those were the same people who acted so friendly and seemed harmless. He was eventually caught, but I never quite got rid of the fear of being home alone in a place somebody tries to break into and have occasional nightmares that portray exactly that. Hey guys, it's the Grim Reader here. I hope you enjoyed listening through that. If you did, please slap a like. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to be notified of future uploads? If you have a story you want me to narrate, please send it to my email in the description box. Once again, thanks a lot for listening.